Today I'd like to start a series all about light painting for nightscape images. Now I realize that this topic can be quite complex and perhaps a little daunting for many people but it's something I've been working on for many years and to be honest lighting foregrounds is what my nightscape photography is all about really. Sure, look, I love the Milky Way and I really enjoy just being out there under the stars. But at the heart of what I do is a passion to express myself in a creative and original way while I'm out there. So that's why I want to spend a bit of time discussing this subject. So today I'm going to look at a few images that I took a, a number of years ago now. Are they my best images that I've ever taken? Well, probably not. But that doesn't really matter at all. You see, these simple shots are going to help me explain some of the basics of light painting. And after all, there really is no magic formula for this stuff. But one thing I will say is that it all has to start right here. This is where the passion and the creativity lives. And once we understand that and spend some time to understand the basic principles involved, well, the sky is literally the limit. So let's have a look at our first image. You may have seen this image on my recent Instagram page. It's a beautiful old petrol bowser. Well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder after all. But it's at a farm property and I'd say these days it's no more than a reminder from a better time. So this image is made from two separate exposures one for the sky and one for the foreground. These were shot on the Nikon D750 with a Nikon 14-24 f2.8 lens and the focal length was set to 14 millimeters. The sky shot is f2.8, 20 second shutter speed at ISO 2500 and the foreground is exactly the same. Now I would probably do it differently today but there you go. There are always multiple ways to get a good result. So the reason I took two images was to focus stack. I remember needing to focus onto the Bowser to get it sharp. Then all I did was do some basic edits in Lightroom and blend the two shots using layer masks in Photoshop. So what about the lighting? Well, I used two lights for this one. Firstly, I placed an LED panel at the back of the Bowser. It had a full CTO gel to give it a warm color it was set to a very low brightness level and it was on for the full 20 seconds of the exposure. Now, this is trial and error. I did a few shots to get it right, but after a while, you just seem to get a feel for these things. The light is shining from the bottom up and if you zoom in, you can actually see the edge of it. The rest of the light is simply a reflection from the internals of the Bowser itself shining all over the ground. Now, if I'd only used one light, we wouldn't see any detail on the front of the Bowser because no light would get through to that section. So I used my small flashlight to give a quick sweep across from right to left. Remember, I'll never ever light any foreground subject from the exact same angle as the camera. So let's take a closer look. I want to highlight some of the areas that give away the lighting techniques. Firstly, let's look at the hose here on the right side. You can clearly see that some of that orange backlight is skimming along the edge of the hose, and that's exactly what we're after. Did I plan for that to happen? Well, I'll leave that up to you to judge, but one thing I will say is that if that light wasn't in the position it is, then we wouldn't see that edge lit that way. What else can we see? Well, the front right hand side of the Bowser is brighter than the left side. Now this is a dead giveaway that the front light came from that side. All right, now as I mentioned, I do things a little bit differently these days. Specifically, I'd stop down the aperture and lower the ISO on the front shot. And this would give me a much sharper image. And I'd, look, I'd probably take more than one image, but overall, it's a good shot. And that's mainly because it's creative and most of us will tolerate a few blemishes if the image moves us emotionally in some way. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Nothing really special about this one. 
It's a single exposure shot with a Nikon D750 and Nikon 50mm f1.8 lens. The lens was set to f2.2, shutter speed of 6 seconds and ISO of 800. At the time there was a fair amount of cloud cover, so I guess I was looking for something a little different. So let's analyse this one. Obviously the shadow is the main feature of this shot and the extremely low positioning of the light source is the key to getting that shadow exactly to line up where it should. The other factor is the distance of the bike to the background shed. So the light is a small torch of about 100 lumens. It was actually sitting on the ground and on for the full duration of the shot, 6 seconds. So by definition this is low level lighting in more ways than one. I chose a 50mm lens because well I like 50mm lenses but also so I could get back a bit from the subject. But the other very interesting thing is that the longer focal length makes that shadow even larger in the frame. The focus is on the bike itself which means that, that at f2.2 the shed and shadow are not in focus. But that's deliberate to keep the main point of interest on the front with the secondary point of interest on the shadow. So this brings me to something else that I think is important. I will always try to incorporate more than one point of interest in my nightscape images. And so by having a light painted foreground uh, with perhaps a Milky Way in the sky behind, these become a perfect illustration of what I'm talking about. Sometimes you can have more than one foreground point of interest. So don't forget standard compositional concepts such as uh, leading lines and rule of thirds and things like that because these can help us establish those points of interest in our images. Just one last thing I want to show you about this image. Because the light is so low, the tiny stones on the driveway are creating little shadows and thus emphasizing the shape and character that I always try to incorporate into my images. It's a subtle but vital part of lighting, but if the light source was directly behind the camera, I'd lose all of that detail. So another image I'd like to show you is this magnificent old Ford truck. Once again, I've used the 50mm f1.8 lens. I did try a few shots with a shorter focal length, but it just wasn't doing it for me on this occasion, so I persisted with the 50. So this shot comprises about three images in total. One sky shot wide open at f1.8, 10 second shutter speed at a very high ISO of 10,000. The foreground shots were f2.5, 10 seconds at ISO 2000. Now at these focal lengths it's very obvious that the foreground images have to be focus stacked to get a good image. The sky is obviously at infinity but the foreground has to be refocused. But at 50 millimeters, I find this to be pretty easy to do. As long as you provide a good amount of light on the truck so you can see a bright image in the live view screen on the back of the camera. Now as far as lighting is concerned once again I used two separate light sources. You can see the warm glow of a low level light inside the cabin and outside I simply use my LED torch. I lit the front of the truck from the left hand side and the rear of the truck also from the left hand back side. I think it was just a bit easier to access uh, on location. In fact in one of these shots I remember running like a madman to light both the front and the back in a single 10 second exposure. Once again if I was doing it now I'd change that completely but you get the picture. And by the way with all of these shots I know a lot of you would be wondering how long I lit the subjects for with my flashlight. Well at these high ISOs it was only for a few seconds at most. It's all you need. Just as I was shooting this image another guy who was there came over and decided to be a model for me. I know it's a change for me but Sean was kind enough to stand still for the 10 seconds and I reckon he did a great job. Very similar lighting as you can see but it worked out quite well. So once again by adding Sean into the shot it provided yet another point of interest. And also I think it tells a bit more of a story, don't you? 
So anyway, I wanna show you one more image and it's a really simple single exposure. This shot, more than any other taken that night, I think expresses the heart and soul of what we were doing there under the stars. Yeah, I know some of you hate images of people shining torches into the sky. Well, I certainly don't. I think it's a perfect way to express our feelings whilst out there enjoying the show. Now this is a single exposure, shot once again at 50 millimeters. It's f2.5 aperture, 10 second shutter speed at ISO 2500. The camera was really low to the ground and that's deliberate. I really did want to get the silhouette of the gates and the fence line. If the camera was higher, I'd lose that great silhouette. I was also very keen to use the bright yellow light pollution from a distant town to my advantage. So the key here is to position our subject in line with that glow so as to emphasize the shadows. The little torch lights were just a subtle added extra. And I think the faint beams certainly don't overpower the shot at all. The other thing I love about this shot is the natural star glow effect from the high level cloud that was present on this night. No Milky Way galactic core, but you know what? It doesn't need anything else in my opinion. Simple yet effective. Simple concept using ambient light and silhouette. Sometimes that's all we need to tell a story. So I hope you got something out of these examples. And to be honest, I deliberately wanted to show you some of my older shots here. I guess I wanna show you that often it's not so much about the settings or the equipment as it is about using what you have to create a story. Lighting will do that every time. And that's what we'll explore more as we go through this series. Okay, so thanks heaps for tuning in. I'll chat with you all in the comments section below. So until next time, you have a fantastic week. Bye for now.